today we are going to talk about biomolecules what are biomolecules molecules we have studied in chemistry and these molecules which are associated with the biology is known as the biomolecule defining a biomolecule we say that it is any organic molecule that is produced by the living organism including large polymeric molecules such as proteins polysaccharides and nucleic acids as well as small molecules such as the primary metabolites the secondary metabolites and the natural products summarizing we can say that all chemical or molecules functional in the living organisms whether inorganic or organic are known as biomolecules there are different types of organic compounds which are found in the living cell and around 1000 of chemical reactions take place at a given time the sum total of all organic and inorganic compound molecules and ions contained in the cells is collectively called as the cellular pool what are inorganic chemicals or substances they include the mineral salts like the calcium phosphate the ions of zinc potassium etc the gases oxygen carbon dioxide and water the organic substances or chemicals are the carbohydrates the amino acids the proteins enzymes lipids the nucleotides the nucleic acids the hormones and the vitamins the chemicals are present in two phases the aqueous and the non aqueous phase now what is an aqueous phase the chemicals the molecules or ions are dispersed in water forming either a true solution or a colloidal solution the true solution is a homogeneous solution here we can see certain biomolecules the peptides the proteins the protein nano complexes or how the biomolecules are assembled hierarchical cell models now coming to the primary and the secondary metabolites in plants the organic compounds exists in the form of alkaloids flavonoids rubber essential oil antibiotics colored pigments scents gums and spices these are known as secondary metabolites the animal tissues have the primary metabolites in the form of amino acids or sugars they have identifiable functions and play very definitive roles in the normal physiological processes while the role or functions of the secondary metabolites in the host organism is not known they are useful to human welfare like the rubber the drugs spices scent etc some secondary metabolites have ecological importance as well let's talk about some secondary metabolites these metabolites are not obtained from animals but from the plants these are in the form of pigments alkaloids terpenoids essential oils toxins lecithins drugs or some polymeric substances now the average composition of cells the water content in a cell can be 70 to 90 percent proteins 10 to 15 percent carbohydrates 3 percent lipids 2 nucleic acids 5 to 7 percent and ions 1 percent 
the small molecules of low molecular weight and with a simple molecular conformation and high solubilities are known as the micromolecules. They are in the form of minerals, water, amino acids, sugars, lipids and nucleotides. Mitochondria has a rich source of manganese while molybdenum is necessary for the fixation of nitrogen catalyzed by the enzyme nitrogenase. Copper occurs in the cytochrome oxidase. Magnesium is essential for a large number of enzymes, particularly those utilizing ATP. Sodium and potassium are responsible for the maintenance of the extracellular and intracellular fluids through the osmotic effects of the concentration of these two ions. Sodium and potassium ions are also responsible for the maintenance of the membrane potential, transmission of the electrical impulses in the nerve cells. However, calcium and magnesium reduce the excitability of the nerves and the muscles both in cells and extracellular fluids, dibasic phosphate and monobasic phosphate act as acid base buffers to maintain the hydrogen ion concentration of the cellular fluids. All the macromolecules excepting lipids are formed by the process of polymerization. Let's talk about water. As we have seen that the water content of a cell is around 70 to 90 percent. Therefore, it is one of the most important constituent. Occurrence, it covers, as we all know, 70 percent of the earth's surface. It constitutes 70 to 90 percent of living cells. 99% in jellyfish and 90 to 95% in a human embryo and around 60 to 70 in human adults. The intracellular fluid present in the human adult contains around 55% of water. The remaining 45% is present as an extracellular fluid like blood plasma, lymph and the interstitial fluid. 95% of the total water occurs in the free state and only 5% is found in the bound state. Water content is low in case of seeds and spores where protoplasm is in an active state. Let's talk about the functions of water. Water is the major component of cells and body fluids. It is a habitat of numerous animals, plants and other organisms. It has maximum solvent action for both electrolytes and non-electrolyte polar substances and it is also the dispersion medium for hydrophilic or reversible colloids. Molecules and ions of dispersed substances are able to move freely in water and react. The dissolved substances diffuse rapidly to all the parts of the aquatic medium. This is helpful for soluble substances like glucose to diffuse uniformly in cytoplasm or get transported in the extracellular fluid. The water maintains and stabilizes the structure and organization of the biomolecules inside the living matter. Complex biomolecules like proteins and nucleic acids fold and attract three-dimensional active forms in the aqueous medium. It is also the transport medium for plants in the form of xylem and phloem which conducts water 
and food to all parts of the plant body and in animals in the form of blood and lymph. Excretory products are eliminated mainly in the solution form and helps to maintain the homeostasis that is the balance within the body. Growth of cells require inflow of water into them. Water maintains the turgid state of cells and soft organs. Earthworm and related animals use water as a skeleton because of their incompressibility. Loss or gain of water is employed in plant movements of variation. Example is opening and closing of the stomata, drooping of leaves in the sensitive plants like Mimosa putica. Aquatic plants are able to perform photosynthesis up to 200 meters depth in the sea. It also keeps the protoplasm transparent so that light can pass into the interior of the leaves and reach up to the chloroplasts. Water column does not break during the ascent of sap in the plants due to strong cohesion force present in it. Therefore, this adhesive force is useful to keep the cell wall moist. A small quantity of water molecules dissociate in the form of hydrogen ions and hydroxyl ions. They are able to change paths of proteins, nucleic acids and phospholipids into ionized states by either providing or accepting hydrogen or OH ions. They act as buffers as well like diabasic phosphate and monobasic phosphates Bicarbonates and carbonic acids are examples of good buffers. Photosynthesis as we all know requires water molecules for the evolve of oxygen providing hydrogen ions and electrons for the reduction of carbon dioxide to the organic state. Here we can see the water taken up by the roots and then further processing the photosynthesis where carbon dioxide is taken in and oxygen is released. This is the chemical equation that is Water undergoes photolysis to give oxygen, hydrogen ions and four electrons. Water is used up in converting polymers into monomers that is glycogen with water on hydrolysis gives glucose and in the dehydration synthesis we find that water is used. Lubrication also requires water, the tissue fluids, the silomic fluid, the pericardial fluid, the cerebrospinal fluid keeps the tissues moist for their optimum functioning and it also acts as a lubricant for joints. Seeds and spores are dormant due to low content of water. As soon as the water content is returned, then it is suitable for germination. In contact with water, phospholipid molecules form the bilayers, which is the basic structure of all cell membranes. Water must lose a lot of heat if it is to freeze. 
This protects the living protoplast from being frozen even if external environment has a very low temperature. Now let's talk about minerals. An organism may have up to 40 elements. They are divisible into two categories, essential and the non-essential. What are essential elements? It is the one which takes part in nutrition, growth and development and the functioning of the organisms. The organisms are unable to complete vegetative or reproductive growth in the absence of the essential elements. Here we find the major elements and the trace elements. Trace elements means which are required in very minimal quantity which include cobalt, manganese, iodine, selenium, molybdenum, copper, zinc and iron while the major elements are calcium, phosphorus, potassium, sodium, chlorine, sulfur and magnesium. Deficiency of the elements produce disorders which can be rectified only by the supply of the elements example carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, calcium, magnesium, manganese etc. The carbon, hydrogen and oxygen are known as the framework elements as they produce the cell wall and the storage products. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur and phosphorus are called protoplasmic elements as they form the protoplasmic or organic substances like proteins and nucleic acids. Complex state of a component of organic molecules like phosphorus or sulfur. Inorganic molecules as calcium carbonate, calcium phosphate are required for the bones and ions required are of sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium and chloride. The non-essential elements are the ones which are not involved in the metabolism, structure or functioning of the organism. The organism does not show any disorder in the absence of the element. Now the plants have only 17 essential elements while animals have 25 to 27 essential elements. Minerals occur in the living beings in three states. Let's see what are the minerals absorbed by plants. Nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, sulfur, iron, manganese, zinc, copper, boron, molybdenum and chlorine. The living beings maintain a balance between the amounts of minerals present in the complex forms or macronutrients and the micronutrients. Major minerals are calcium, phosphorus, sodium, chlorine, magnesium, potassium and sulfur. Minor minerals are iron, copper, cobalt, manganese, molybdenum, zinc, fluorine, iodine and selenium. Trace elements we have already seen before. They are required in extremely low concentration. Macronutrients are phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, sulfur and iron. Carbon, hydrogen and oxygen are macronutrients but they are not derived from minerals. 
minerals are found as a part of the cellular structure as biologically active substances they act as enzyme activators and they perform several other functions now they have a role to play in the cellular structure like coats that is the exoskeleton the calcium carbonate forms strengthening material of exoskeleton of arthropods calcium is an important component of the molluscan shells on burning the shells it yields the lime of calcium oxide the calcareous algae have calcareous covering around them coral secrete calcareous shells or coralite here we find mollusk shell the calcareous algae and the corals they are all minerals